What's up? What's up? What's up, people? How are you doing? Um, I am back. Your girl, Kristen Nicole, is back with a new podcast episode. I am extremely excited. Let me take my earring out because I know it's going to affect my um, what I'm trying to say today. But um, again, your girl is recording a video along with um, this podcast. So um, excuse if I have to do some type of technical things, but I'm excited to talk talk today because I'm going to be a little bit passionate in this episode. Um, this is something that I've been wanting to talk to you know you all about, but I didn't know how to put it into words. So um, today, we're going to go all the way in on a specific trend that I'm starting to see. And the trend is this toxic red pill, blue pill content. What do I mean by that? So there's this content, meaning YouTube videos, podcasts, you name it, um, people being vocal about women, specifically Black women, um, when they get to a certain age, them being too old for marriage, them being too old to have kids, them being um, just washed up and really downing them, trying to better themselves as far as education, and I'm not understanding why this has taken over the YouTube platform and the um, podcast platform, mainly the podcast. Um, I'm not sure why this is taking over. So it's interesting to see how it's affecting women. And I've recognized that it's been doing a lot more damage to women um, versus encouraging them because me as a 32 year old woman um I don't care about saying my age because I look um young as for a matter of fact I did I spoke at a career day and the the children they were like the class was like I look eight years old so I don't care about talking about my age but here's the thing I do not feel old I do not feel like I'm too late. I am a 32 year old woman, black woman that's not married yet. So I'm coming from that perspective before people that are married and um, you know, are going that path start, you know, thinking that I'm inconsiderate to what they feel. But being a 32 year old black woman, I'm gonna tell you the space that I was in. Um, before all this content started happening. I was one of those women that were, ex I was extremely discouraged because I wasn't married yet. I had a child when I was, I got pregnant when I was 23. I had him when I was um, just before I turned 24. So you got to understand, I really was in a space after I had him of like really feeling down and out about what I, what decision I made. And so when you feel down and out about a decision, you don't really feel like yourself. You don't have confidence. You're not, you're really down about, you know, you, you're really hard on yourself. And I was in that space because for one, I had a dream of being in a marriage at a certain age. I had a dream of having all my kids at a certain age, which was when I look back now, extremely young um, in high school, I'm talking about, I want to be married by 21, 22. Nothing wrong with that, but I look back now and I'm like, I'm glad I didn't do that when I thought that I was ready. Because sometimes we say things and I know majority of the time that I said stuff in the past, I thought I was ready for those particular things and I was not as life panned out. So I wasn't ready for those type of things. I thought that I was, um, but I was very immature. Um, there was a lot of growing that had to take place. And I'm not sure if, if growing into who I am now would have 
um, benefited me within a marriage. Now, I come from, from a church background and they teach for you to get married really young, of course, so that you're not like, you know, having sex a million times with people, um, you're not having kids out of wedlock, like they teach you all these things. But I think because I didn't know the other side of things, like you knowing yourself, you really understanding your purpose, they didn't really talk about those things within the window of marriage. So it was just kind of like get married and y'all will do everything together. <laughs> but now we have a whole bunch of talk about like, you know, separate people coming together. Um, I think it's benefiting the generations behind me even more because there's so much dialogue on it. At the time, I couldn't find anything that really spoke to um, getting yourself together as a woman to be a wife. So now we have all this content um, of that, but we also have this toxic content of you're too old after 30 to get married. You're too old to have kids. You're, um, if you decide to get your education before you get married, nobody's going to want you because you're already old and all this stuff. And I think it's very toxic for women in general to only think about who those men or women are speaking about. All this talk about high value men, high value women, everybody's not high value. Everybody's not that type of person. In the real life, like the rural areas, not big cities, the, you know, United States is huge. Um, I'm just speaking because that's what country I live in. And to be quite frank, a lot of these areas are behind like they're behind decades of catching up to what's really popular now. So when you see this content and say you live in a smaller town or a smaller city, you really take this in differently than someone, you know, having access to this type of stuff that people are talking about. So some people in some people in rural areas, not all, some people in rural areas, women specifically, they take in all this stuff that is being said about us as Bible. Like this is the gospel that they live. So they do all these things according to what these, you know, this man said that popped up on YouTube and went viral or these, you know, young men are saying, and I saw a clip today of a man like, let, let me be real about this. The main men that I'm seeing talk about this and have this content is black men. And I can say that because I'm a black woman. And I think it's so unfortunate to set up people for failure basically because of your own opinion. Like the most of the stuff that they're saying, especially the young, there's some that's giving like factual evidence, blah, blah, blah. But there's a lot that's just like, I don't like this type. I don't like that type. You're too old. You're So all these opinions and um, toxic opinions are being thrown out and they're being thrown out in the airwaves. And it's basically prophesying to people, um, specifically black women, their lives. Who are you to tell me if I decide to go to college and I decide to put aside, you know, all the things of what my parents may have, you know, went through, meaning they got married, um, you know, they, they got married at a young age, uh, they decided to have kids at a young age, they decided this and that, just because if I'm a woman and I put that to the side, that doesn't make me a bad person. There's just different things that we have access to now. There's an extremely high amount of Black women that have access to education and college now. Back then, no, this wasn't going on. So when you look at history and you look at some of the things as specifically Black women couldn't do, you shouldn't be surprised at the high rate of Black women wanting to be in education, getting their degrees, getting, um, you know, as much learning as they can. Because at one point, this was illegal. 
this was illegal for us to do. So when I see all these young black men saying, you know, uh, highly educated women is um, unattractive and all this stuff and, and blah, 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 it really puts a bad rap on, for one, how you were raised. One, what are you listening to? What, what I mean, what shaped and molded your opinion of that? Thirdly, um, you're spewing poison on people. Like you're letting them, you're letting them know that they're not a good person because of a specific, um, you know, specific decision that they make. And so when I was in my early 20s, when I was having my son, the it's so crazy to see this flip now because I was kind of like discouraged because I was having my son so young. Like I was, people were saying certain things, especially in the church arena. Like I kind of got shunned by a lot of people. Um, I remember I couldn't have a baby shower at a church that was open to the community because I was having him out of wedlock. So I ran into a lot of those disparities when um, I decided to have my son with his father and we weren't married. But now you see this change of, them preaching the gospel of you need to get married um, at, you know, 20, 21, you need to have your kids early. If you don't have these things, you're, you're this, you're that. And it's so weird. It's weird to me. And I think it's really doing damage to a lot of women that are in my age group. Um, they are past 23, 24. They're now 25, 26, 27. And it's making them feel like their identity should be based on being a wife or being these things that will eventually come. But when you lead with that and you say, I'm not a good person unless I'm a wife. I'm not a good person unless I'm this. I'm not a good person unless I, you know, stop being selfish and want to get my degree. You shouldn't think that you're being selfish getting your college degree. You shouldn't be uh, thinking that you're selfish getting a, like starting a business or starting your career. It's not being selfish. What it is, is living out a dream that you had. And for some women, they're able to balance the both. Like they're able to balance having, being a wife, having kids and getting a degree. That's some women. There's some women that wants to put marriage to the side for a little bit, be open to it, but they wanna just get their stuff in order. Nothing wrong with that. And they want to just put that on the back burner for now. Then there's some women that go the traditional route where they go to college, they might meet their husband there, um, and they, you know, both graduate, they get married, they're young, you know, they start, they get married, they have the kids. But what I'm finding is everybody's story is different. So when you have this red pill, blue pill content where you got to pick this or that and, and it's do or die, that is not helping people find their true identity. That's not helping them be success, a success in their life, however that looks, because all our success does not look the same. My success is I was able to persevere past a hard time in my life with my dad dying the same year as my son and persevere past people shunning me because I decided to have a child out of wedlock. Then I got to the point of quitting stability, a, a solid job to do what I do now full-time, being an author, being an artist, being whatever I want to create. Like it took perseverance. So that's my version of success for my life. But the only thing that I can do is I don't have to always give you opinion based like, I mean, even when I talk to kids now about like my career and stuff, I don't even tell them don't go to college because I that's my true belief. Like you don't have to go to college for everything, but I don't sit there and tell them don't go to college. And that's just straight up. How would that be fair to the children that are listening and they've had this dream of going to college to be a doctor, to be a lawyer? And I'm telling them, don't go to college. 
like putting it in a way where they can't even ask questions like they just can't do it. That's not fair to them. So this red pill, blue pill content is extremely toxic towards women because it's almost like the controversial thing of telling people what to do with their bodies. That's why people feel that way because it's like, instead of educating people on certain things that, okay, if you do this, this is the outcome. If you do that, this is the outcome. If you do this, then that's fine. They don't put things like that necessarily um, in this country or as you see in the airwaves on YouTube or with content, it's either or, like you gotta pick either or. And so I'm out here to kind of show women like we are diverse, especially black women. Like we, our self-esteem and confidence has been taken blow after blow after blow just because of these men thinking that they have the answers to our lives. There are good men out here that have great content that's helping women, but these other people, they wash out all of these other good men that are trying to just support women. And I don't view this content as supporting women, especially black women, especially black millennials or women that are millennials in general, because right now the millennial age is 25 to about 41 or 42. So if you have a 40 year old woman that just decided to focus on her career and say the doctor say she can actually still get pregnant after she's gotten married, is the content going to stop her? Hopefully it will not, but there is some slight sort of insecurity um, because like, what if I, you know, what if I don't produce this baby? Is the, is the man going to leave me? Am I too old? See, that's what that stuff does to our identity. It, it doesn't make us feel confident. It makes us doubt every decision that we're making. That's why I encourage my listeners and whoever's listening um, to this, be careful with what you feed yourself. Be careful with what you're watching, consuming, because if you consume enough of that, you're not gonna believe in yourself. <laughs> you're not. You're gonna think that you're behind. You're gonna think if you are a, a person that went the traditional route, you're gonna think, well, I don't know myself and you're gonna start like regretting your decision. That's why it's so important to pay attention to what you consume. You don't have to consume this stuff. You could be, you could cut it off. <laughs> That's the beauty, cut it off. But um, I just wanted to talk about that today really quickly because I'm finding that the conversations of women um, are changing. And I think the shots are being fired a little bit more at black women because we have decided to uh, educate ourselves and take um, full advantage of the access of educating ourselves. And we're on the rise with entrepreneurship. We're on the rise in a lot of different areas. And I feel like sometimes there's so many hurdles that get thrown in front of us to make us feel like we're doing too much, but you're not. You're not doing too much. If you have big goals and dreams, I don't, I'm not a goal person. I'm like a mandate person. Like this gotta be done by this date. But if you're a goals or dreams person and they feel like they're too much, do it. That's my advice to anyone listening to this. Do it because nine times out of 10, and I'm even talking to myself, nine times out of 10, that's going to be a major thing for you in your life if it's too big. So that's all I want to talk about today. I hope that you all have a great rest of your week and I will be back on here um, to talk about other various things that's happening um, that you need to know uh, that's happening now. And I will talk to you soon. Toodles.